putting the human back into technology with Gethin Ellis and Mark Williams. Welcome to the seventh episode of the Fit Podcast. Here at GethinEllis.com, whilst we know physical fitness is essential, our mental health is vital too, and our Fit Podcast is all about putting the human back into technology. One thing we can probably all agree on is the last year or so has been unprecedented. So we wanted to seek out the views of technology leaders, business owners and consultants and many others from a range of different businesses and organisations to discuss with them the impacts on their business, on their humans and on their technology and how they see the future unfolding. So without further ado, I'll introduce you to episode 7 where we speak to the National Residential Landlords Association's Head of IT, Ben Morris. Okay, everybody, welcome to the seventh episode of the Putting the Human Back into Technology podcast. Today, Mark and I are joined by uh, Ben Morris, who is the head of IT for the National Residential Landlords Association. Um, Welcome, Ben. Thanks for having me. No problem. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, Ben, I'll kick off. I'll kick off with the first question, and um, Mark and I will will try and alternate, but Mark Mm. will probably ask six of them. Of the seven, okay. and, I'll, and I'll, I'll sit here and uh, and uh, and take notes. But um, <clears throat> jump aside, just just kick us off. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do, what your job is, what your business does, that type of thing. Please. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so I'm the head of IT for the National Residential Landlords Association. We're um, a uh, pr- uh, work in the private rental sector, the uh, one of the largest uh, asso- landlord uh, associations in the country. We've got seventy thousand plus members and growing. Uh, we represent landlords at Westminster. Uh, we have a, a landlord advice service. We do um, a landlord accreditation training services. Um, we also have a, a really good third party network and growing third party network for our recently released approved partner scheme. So we, we've got um, uh, relations with insurance companies, credit checks and a, a whole host of other growing uh, portfolio third-party services. Um, my role, uh, I'm in charge of the, the infrastructure and uh, service support team, uh, and I also manage the ongoing maintenance of our um, web uh, systems, our e-commerce systems, uh, and our CRM. Uh, and we... Um, uh, have a uh, growing IT department. Our IT department's actually doubled in in the last year. We, we've so uh, you know that uh, shows that you know the company's certainly supportive of the IT function and its, and its value in uh, the NRLA. Mm, cool. So it looks, that sounds like it, with the, the sort of growth that you've you've experienced, the technology is very much becoming a key driver of of, of what your business does. I think uh, a, a lot of businesses have, have really appreciated that in the last 12 months mm-hmm. um you know uh we the, the business business is very much saying you know we, we need to have technology at the forefront of our business and our and our it at the forefront of our business because you know vast majority of our revenue is driven over it systems in fact pretty much the vast majority of it uh, is all core based through it systems whether it be the website or the phone system um so you know if, if the it isn't isn't good if the, the it isn't of uh, uh, good quality and uh, providing valuable service for both colleagues and our members then you know that those um revenue streams are, are going to be less less productive so they're very much uh, putting it at the forefront of the business cool. maybe maybe we could um sort of use that as a bit of a segue ben into mm-hmm. into you know into the next um question about you know, i mean it's over a year now isn't it but you know how how, it, how the last year or year or so has has impacted the, the business and, and i guess um the strain or the opportunity that that's that's given you guys in in in, in it perhaps as well well, um, you know, in terms of the business, the the we've done we've done quite well during the last twelve months. I mean, we've probably brought on about twenty twenty five new new employees into the business, which is uh, it's considering so many uh, businesses sadly um, uh, are no longer around, and mm. um, and a lot of companies shut up shop in terms of hiring. Is is it has it's just shown how you know how well the 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 company has weathered the pandemic. Um, 
uh, so the IT department has, has, has increased. We've actually got a, a new member of the IT department joining in, in the infrastructure team on Monday. Um, you know, so uh, while um, you know that there has been challenges for certain, um, a, a major challenge was the business was a predominant in-office working model before yeah. the pandemic struck, and <laughs> almost overnight the the IT team had to transition the business to a predom- pretty much everybody working from home. Um, and at for a stage, it was everybody working from home. Um, we've only just started stream, uh, you know, in limited quantities, returning to office-based work. But um, you know, we had a drastic change in model. Uh, I mean, thankfully, the business uh, has invested in its IT over the last, uh, especially you know, two or three years. We did a a major IT overhaul in 2019, um, a year after I joined the business. Uh, where we we invested heavily in our infrastructure um, across the board, uh, introduced uh, new data centers, new hosting platforms, uh, new telephony system, um, and and that the versatility that provided the business essentially played a massive part in its ability to uh, transition and and weather the very challenging time of the last twelve months. But um, just as a sort of an, as, an aside, this is what this is what Gethin hates about this because I just do go off on a tangent. But <laughs> um, about um, twelve or thirteen months ago, um, I was um, I was helping um, the RCN, um, uh, and, and I, I'm wondering whether it was a similar sort of situation because the, the the calls just rocketed going through the um, you know the contact center and obviously the chat and the website and all those sorts of things as yes. as well. But I, I, I imagine you had a lot of people who were suddenly phoning you for uh, m- maybe for advice as well as to whether they should or yes. shouldn't keep charging you know <laughs> their, 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 their paying tenants and so on and so forth, all that sort of stuff which was which probably changed the yes. profile did it a bit uh, well yeah you may make a valid point you know we, we have seen a, a noticeable increase on our um, uh, main contact center lines um, a, a large portion of our hiring over the last 12 months has been in the contact center yeah. to be able to uh, uh, cope with the the additional traffic that's going through it has been an incredibly challenging 12 months for everybody but um, it is an incredibly and, and continues to be to this day a very challenging time for, for landlords. Um, you know, we, we've had a, a lot of government policy changes. We've seen uh, a lot of effects on, on landlords' ability to obtain uh, rent from their tenants uh, due to obviously court closures and uh, other government policies, which has uh, been around uh, over the last 12 months. Uh, and landlords are requiring our services um uh, especially our advice services because they're, they're encountering a lot of challenging uh, uh circumstances with the tenants so yes you're absolutely right there's been we have there have had a noticeable jump in our in what in our services which is um obviously good but uh, at the same time we need to make sure that we are uh uh, supporting our membership through what continues to be an extremely uh, challenging period for uh, the private rental centre. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what you're there for at the end, and not not the whole thing that you're there for. But obviously, as you mentioned, a number of things at the top of the meeting. But they they want they want some peace of mind when they call you, don't you? That, that indeed um, that um, you know you're, you're going to offer them some sensible suggestions about uh, what to do, and and you know put your arm around them. That you know that 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 kind absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Cool, cool. Oh, I was just coughing there. I wasn't, I wasn't interrupting, Mark. <laughs> well, I, just thought, um, I just, just thought for a change, I'd allow you to ask the next question. We'll, we'll move on to the next one then, Ben. So, obviously, you, you mentioned uh, in, in your intro about how, how IT is 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 now becoming core for, for, for your business model. How do sort of people fit into that, in, into your IT department and how you go about delivering um, your, your, your IT solutions? Well, um, we're... Um, um, really uh, in terms of a culture in the IT department I'd say it's a it's a, it's a very uh, enjoyable casual um, feeling in the department I uh, you know people that report to me I'm very much a uh, work hard play hard type of person I want to people to enjoy working for for me and working for the company 
and um, uh, but at the same time, I want people to perform. I need people to support me uh, and, and support me in my performance, and obviously for me to perform for myself. Um, so you, you know, in terms of a, a culture within the IT department, we want uh, you know, hardworking people. Obviously, we want um, quality people that can provide value, uh, as, as that is something that's distinctly. Um, important in a uh, business such as ours, which is a, a not-for-profit organisation, uh, value um, is a a very frequent measurement of success. Um, so we we need people that, that fit into that type of culture. That you know, while um, uh, we talk to each other in a very jovial manner, we um you know we, we are you know uh, have uh, a really nice culture in terms of um being relaxed and casual but at the same time people know they've got to get on with the job and they uh, will be measured about on how the success of them getting on with the job over the last um i was just thinking about um you know what we were talking about on the previous question about um you bring in new people into the contact center, for example, but, but not, but not. I don't want to focus solely on on, on that, but because there's there's been a lot of um, been a lot of focus on on sort of let, let's call it mental health support throughout lots yes. of organisations. Indeed, you know, over the last you know twelve or fifteen months or so, mm-hmm. uh, and and I, or, you know segueing that to the to the contact center uh, folks, you know you you would have been onboarding those fully, uh, you know to, to to start working from home uh, rather yes. than start yeah. coming yeah. in from the office. How how has that? We haven't quite asked this question before, but from from an IT perspective, mm-hmm. so uh, from what you've said, I'm assuming you wouldn't have had people answering the phones from home before um, the you know the pandemic. Maybe maybe not, but um, clearly you've had to onboard people into into working from home, and and I'm kind of wondering what what the um, how how IT has been able to support, or what you've had to do differently or extra within IT to to be able to support people, uh, either working from home, not just your own IT folks, but um, you know the contact centre folks, and 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 what you've had to do to get your your heads around things like supporting people with mental awareness from from awareness from a you know from a, from a technology perspective. So uh, I'll answer that question from a, a, a general business part first before I answer the, the technical part of, of that response. Uh, I mean, the, our business has, uh, has made a, a, a real effort to you know, realise and identify that the, the, it has been especially taxing on people's mental health working from home. Some people work well in it, some people don't. Um, and you know the company has uh, implemented a n- number of policies and procedures and and um, ways of, of of working, such as regular check-ins from managers. Uh, you know, I, I call my uh, people um, in my team on a regular basis, um, sometimes every day, sometimes a few times a week. But uh, I make a point checking in to make sure their mental health and them as the people are, are okay. And I, I believe that is happening in all areas of our business. Uh, we, our HR department has worked really well and hard on this front. We've uh, implemented workshops for mental health discussions and um, really trying to, you know, empower people to think that, you know, that they're not alone. Um, there's, we, you know, we have a, a wide ranging of of people in our organisation. We have people with families. We have people that are single and living by themselves who are feeling quite isolated. So, you know, from a, a cultural perspective, we've re- had to go really hard on this because mm-hmm. it has it has been noticeable that, you know, some we've had people that have struggled, mm-hmm. but we've, we've, we've tried to, in, 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 in my uh, information and, and knowledge, um, really in, engage with our colleagues to, to ensure that they're okay uh, as well as we can do, um, uh, which has it's been really good of the, of the business to, to do that. In, in terms of technology services, I think um, the the one platform that we've had to um, we were using before the pandemic, but one platform that we, we found utterly invaluable during the last twelve months has been, ironically, the platform we're using right now, Microsoft Teams. Um, your ability to have video calls, voice calls, chats, uh, and really increase that interaction between colleagues. 
has been utterly critical in our ability to, to get through the last year as well as we have. Um, and, and using technology platforms just like Microsoft Teams has, has, has been a really great boon in, in giving people uh, an ability to, to feel they can express themselves and both give and receive valuable communication, which, uh, you know, not just from a mental health perspective, from, but from a general business communication perspective. Do you think people have, um, sorry, Gareth, do you think people, um, users have um, grown in their confidence of using technology? Um, so I think about teams, for, you know, for, for, for example, and I, 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 clearly I don't know what it's like within, within, within your business, uh, mm-hmm. Ben, but I, I, I would probably say that as a, as a really general statement in, in lots of membership organisations, um, the users... Um, User competence, shall we say? Let's be nice and say user competence <laughs> and technology varies. Let's 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 say it like that. But I'm kind of wondering whether be, you know because they've they've had to whether they've grown in confidence you know over that period of time. Uh, I think they have, to be honest. Um, I, you know, the, um, it was quite a, a challenging time uh, 12 months ago because we had people working in in, in new ways, uh, working on new systems. Um, so uh, from a from an IT perspective, there was a, a huge amount of change 12 months ago because um, the, the actual NRLA merged, or actually began as a business a year ago. It merged from two previous organizations, the Residential Landlords Association and the National Landlords Association became, came to one to join one combined merged organization. So we had... Um, that, well, that, merger that was only t- a year ago, did you say? Yeah, that, that merger took place on the 1st of, of April. Wow. <laughs> Right in the middle of the first lockdown. Uh, well, literally a week after the first lockdown, we, the wow. business merged. So we had uh, a new website. Uh, we had a, a new CRM. We had everybody on new laptops because most of them were on desktops in the office. So we had to provide our entire contact centre with laptops because nobody in a contact centre had a laptop. Um, we had about two weeks to do that transition. Uh, on in terms of desktop to laptop, um, so we had all that change, all that that merger, it would become a reality, and the pandemic, new IT systems all into one. So the fact that we we got through that is is uh, um, and got through that well, uh, it just shows um, is a, is a great pat on the back for the IT yeah. team and our and our users. Um, we have obviously had a, a you know it wasn't all. Um, singing and dancing we had a, a lot of challenges we had a, a lot of education and to be honest we still have a lot of education I get regular requests for uh, staff uh, colleague training um, and we're actually going to be uh, looking to improve our services on that front in the IT team in the next few months to uh, you know increase our, our, our colleague IT knowledge so I mean from where we were, say, 15 months ago, 16 months ago, at the start of the pandemic to, to where we are right now, um, you, you can see that a noticeable increase in, in colleague confidence and competence with their IT systems, because you can see it in the ticket numbers. Uh, you know, we, we, we've we, there's been a reduction in our, our support desk ticket numbers purely based on the fact that people have become more familiar and more confident with the tools that they're, they're now using. Oh. That's that's really we genuinely haven't asked that question before, no. uh, Ben. So thank you for thank you for right. answering that. And I, I know I know uh, I know you weren't prepped to answer that question. It's right. but, it's, <laughs> but, it's, but it's really quite interesting, isn't it? That you know that, that you know that that whole sort of balance between keeping the lights on and doing something which which is um, you know adding new value to to the business. You know maybe maybe that extra time is is allowing you to do that. Anyway, I've definitely asked enough, asked enough questions on on my <laughs> slot. So um, <laughs> let, let me hand over to Geth. Well, Mark, I think it's technically your question, but um, I'll, 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 I'll I'll go with this one. All right? So. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, uh, hopefully, it, 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 I think you may have covered some of this already, mm. Ben, in fairness to you, right? But the, the question we were going to ask is, how does your organisation drive value from its data and its technology? Are you on a cloud journey? Um, if you are, are you there yet? What, you know, what's the sort of, like, uh, strategy roadmap for your, for your tech going forward? So, uh, we are currently in a, a hybrid cloud space we have some systems which are not cloud-based and some that are Uh, the the business has made a a decision that it wants to go to a a full uh, or as much as possible uh, cloud 
uh, set up. So we have a, a number of project streams on at the moment to look at what our current infrastructure is and how we go about that. Um, uh, the, the the systems that we have in, in place at the moment uh, in the company, uh, I, I previously leaned on the point that we were a predominant work from office business. So the the architecture is is set up to you know make that um, as efficient and as expedient and as high performance as possible. So that the architecture that was put in place in 2019. Um, during the IT refresh is, is geared uh, around that type of strategy. Obviously, the strategy is <laughs> a massive change since then. Um, so, you know, we we are on the road to full cloud and we hope to be there in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, there's going to be a, a lot of challenges in that because, you know, it's not simple as switching a bunch of uh, virtualized infrastructure in uh, public cloud on it's uh, I think the big challenge will be as as migrating our, our colleagues and um, ensuring our members data is secure those are, are the, probably the, the two biggest challenges about those types of um, that type of project but we, we are very much you know, we, we are part of on that journey in terms of where we currently are and we are looking and, and are in the middle of doing a full journey to a um, to a full cloud systems uh, it'll be very microsoft based as, as we currently are and um, we, we you know we want to provide uh, uh, greater versatility to our colleagues is that something that's that's been very apparent in the last 12 months that you know we, we're working in, in a manner which which the current architecture is, is is not you know perfectly suited to and we need to move to an architecture that that is more suited to uh, whatever the norm <laughs> may end up being uh which is is still obviously very much open for debate at the moment to to what where we actually land on that real norm in terms of operating versus work from home to in office yeah yeah, I, I think I think there will be. My opinion is there's going to be some change there. Um, I'm not saying everyone's going to be working at home forever, but I don't think we're going to be five days a week in offices. Uh, I don't think we'll ever get back to that, or there'll be a significant. That's my opinion, and you know, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. That's just kind of my mm. kind of gauge on that. But that's cool. That's cool. So <clears throat> I'm just going to ask. I'm, it's, it's kind of related to this question, so I, I'll just ask the digital transformation bit, and then we'll get onto the fun stuff, right? But um, <laughs> Uh, it, 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 it seems like you're on you're on a journey, and you know you're very modest about what you've managed to do over the last 12 months. I was like, you did a complete merger of organisations a week after lockdown. It's pretty uh, uh, pretty impressive. Sure. Um, uh, but but it, it, and, and obviously as part of that, there would have been a lot of digital change. But and, and digital change is driving seems to be driving your business forward. But from your perspective, who in your organisation would be driving that that digital transformation? Well, uh, we, we've appointed a, a chief technology officer to the business uh, in the last um, well, uh, six months, actually, just before right. Christmas. Um, and he represents the, the IT function and the technology function at a board level. Right. Um, so, you know, he's a key player in that digital transformation. Um, and he um, you know, has, has some really good plans for the company. Uh, obviously, he's, um, from what I see thus far, he's, he's quite a, a democratic character and wants to engage as much as possible with not just uh, the IT department, but our, our colleagues overall in terms of uh, engaging what that uh, you know, digital uh, project is. We are very much a data-driven business, which is, is, is really good to see. Um, uh, you know, we, we are very big on analysis of data and how that can help make our business decisions more intelligent. Uh, I think that's only a good thing that we, we think more like that and make sure that we are, are using, making the best use of our data and our, and our uh, business intelligence in order to uh, strengthen our, our business strategy and our, and our investments, especially in digital uh, products. You know, we, we are um, engaging some new work streams in the next year. 
Uh, one of those will be um, we're going to be doing a bit of diversification of the business into uh, property technology, which we, we currently haven't done. We're, we're looking at a property portfolio system, which we will soon be announcing um, uh, to the market in terms of who we're partnering with that um with that and and you know we, we're very much engaging um con- a continued process of digital transformation and development cool so, okay. so, so I'm, I'm actually genuinely interested in that but but it's not quite the subject so i and i'm not going to ask you too many difficult questions here but i assume that's some kind of um service that you're going to offer uh you know your your, your customers and say if you've got you know x number of properties you can manage them on on this platform and, and and so on and so forth is that that type of thing i imagine you're going down that down the path of yeah yeah and i, I and you know I've, I've been i've been saying this to the organization for the uh the three and a half years that i've been here and 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 thankfully the 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 new nrla board are, are very much for and engaging um that type of project is you know there's there's a space there for us to become um you know to, to really drive uh an increased portfolio of offerings to our our members and non-members you know we, we're not um um obviously while we want people to come members and of the organization you know, you know we, we have a, a very passionate set of of colleagues uh, about uh, the private rental sector and and landlords in general and want to provide services which um you know empower landlords to be better landlords uh, and and make landlords lives easier in <laughs> as we discussed earlier in a very very challenging market space yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's it's, it's sort of uh, it ticks a number of boxes, doesn't it? Because you know, at the end of the day, if you can um, help those landlords, um, <laughs> that, I also do quite a lot of work in the financial services industry, you know, and and um, there's a bit of a commonality there, in the, in the, you know, in the sense that let's say an IFA or someone of that of that sort of nature, they 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 don't want to know. I was going to swear that they don't know much about technology, frankly. They just want to, they just want to you know um, talk to clients about um, um, you know unit trusts and investments and all that all that sort of stuff. In, in your case, um, your, your your landlords technology isn't their business, is it? You know, so um, if you can help with that, and and as a consequence, you know, uh, drive standards, uh, you know, with with, with with you know with with that, that all helps. You know, all, all helps to to get a. Uh, you know, to, to trust in the in the marketplace. It helps with you know uh, policy lobbying, or you know, all those things. I, 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 that sounds great to me. Um, so um, uh, uh, I'll watch that space. We say when uh, you know when 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 that's coming out. Well, Mark, right, it's o- it's over to you. We've got. Oh, two- I, that's right, because I always get the quite. I always get. The I, I'll tell you what. I, I la- I last no, 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 no. You can't you do that. Right. Well, why don't you share, thing. gents? Why don't you share? <laughs> What advice would you give your younger self, um, Ben, or, or, or those starting out, um, or, you know, on, on, on a career uh, in the IT industry or, or, or generally, as you prefer? Oh, well, maybe I, I had a, a good thing about this, obviously, because, you know, you were kind of send me the questions earlier in the week. Um, I've got quite a controversial opinion on this one, and I, I've certainly uh, to, to people in, in, in IT have, have said this before, and, and even to colleagues said this before. Um, businesses are, uh, are, and probably should be, are becoming less focused on whether somebody has a degree or not. Uh, there was a time when, you know, on, on um, especially with the more junior positions, um people were not so uh, were, were basically saying uh, you know on the job application do you have a degree um i see that less and less now and uh, and I, I agree with that because uh, when i uh, but the irony is everybody in the it department at the nrla has a degree uh, uh, yeah um so when i when i say this um but you know I personally feel that if I was a, a, a somebody starting out in IT or, or wanted to get into IT, that um, I would focus on getting industry accreditations, uh, whether it be uh, MCSE, Cisco, ITIL, you know, there's so many out there. But I, I personally feel uh, from a hiring manager perspective, I would be looking at what qualifications and experience but how some of these people starting out obviously don't have that experience but you know, those I, I would look at those two things 
more than I would look at, say, oh, this person has or hasn't got a degree. Um, and also um, a, a, a big thing in, in, in IT is uh, having an ability to learn and willingness to learn. Um, you know, I, I've been in IT now for almost 20 years and I am far from perfect. I've always got something new to learn and I'm always very open to learning new skills and knowledge. Um, and I, you know, I would say that anyone starting out needs to, to be very open minded and very willing to learn um, not just technical skills, but personal skills as well, which I think is, is a major challenge for IT professionals because with the greatest respect to some, that they don't have personal skills or, or, or great personal skills. So when we've had, obviously, uh, you know, challenges with more junior staff that have had personal skill issues, and the fact that we've had to you know, engage an upskilling process as best we can with them to to overcome those um, challenges. Do you think? Um, <coughs> do you think uh, UK PLC, should we say, should should be more in, uh, encouraging to? Um, yeah, one month, two month, three month internship type things. Then for for people just you're just thinking about the thing. You know, you don't don't necessarily need to have a degree, but what you need is a bit of experience and and uh, and maybe maybe some qualifications, some accreditations. Uh, I'm just wondering how tricky that is because th- th- there's a lot of trust that are put in IT yeah. colleagues, aren't there? Yes. And that, yeah, that's yeah, what I was trying yeah. to drive at with that. So yeah. I can see both yeah. sides of it. What what what's your view? Uh, well, personally, I think you know everyone needs a chance in life. Uh, to um, you know to get on Um, uh, people need opportunities to do that Um, and uh, uh, however uh, on the flip side security has to be a a, play an important role in in the IT world because a level of access for example um, uh, uh, I'm the the NRLA's network admin so uh, a lot of trust is play, placed in me and, and everyone in the IT department. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I, I do, I would like to see more opportunities such as that. However, there, it's quite a difficult balancing act because, mm-hmm. um, you know, for, for me personally, um, you know, training someone up, putting time into somebody and then them disappearing uh, and then restarting over, it, it would personally have an effect on me and my IT colleagues because we, we've, we're engaging, putting the effort into uh, that type of person on, or, or coming in, and 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 then they go again, and you start again, off have to restart. Um, that would be extremely difficult for us because you know we've got our own jobs and our own responsibilities and our own targets. Um, however. I do think that you know those types of internships and apprenticeships are are, are, are a key way forward for uh, especially right here right now where there's got uh, such um, uh, issues for the the younger generations and the, the post grad generations finding work at the moment. Yeah, I know, I know, I know exactly what 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 you mean, and it's. Um... And I, I'm quite motivated by helping people, to, to, mm. to be honest, Ben. I've done a, you know, a fair bit of that in uh, before I had my own business when I was working for large corporates. Um, and it, it, the, it, to do it right, you have to put quite a lot of effort in from you know the 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 mentor and the coach side of things and and clearly that means you're not doing your BAU uh, you know job at the, at, the, at that point if you bring in on somebody as as an intern or, or equivalent it, it's a lot of work to not and I, I don't mean it, I, I sort of don't mean it in a disparaging way um but it's a lot of work to 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 make sure that you that they don't just get to do the filing if you know what I mean by that because because they you know you need to get them some proper experience don't you and then therefore you've got to think about what that experience is and how you in in the case that we're describing here how how you manage that um uh, effort of training versus security and you know and, and and so on and so forth very tricky yes yeah yeah, yeah. I, I know a lot of universities are um they're doing the sort of apprenticeship scheme so you would go out there get real world experience but that would be with probably with a view and that the, where I've experienced this the companies involved have they don't want to lose these the, the talent that they've got once they've gone through that process. So, uh, granted, they might not take a candidate every year because once they, they're full and they're, they're at capacity. But what they what they've done is taken on the apprenticeships and they've used it to grow their their resources internally and they've kept them on and and, and they've stayed after. So, 
but then perhaps you know next year they're not gonna they're not gonna take somebody else on. So I, I can see I can see the difficulty either way, and uh, I, I don't think it's that controversial, Ben. I will I will say uh, you don't need a degree to work in IT. That's probably going to be the title yeah, of the got, show or we something got the like title that. Of the show. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, and, 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 and I'll be honest with you, I think you'll find a lot of people do um, will, will will tend to agree with that, and you know you. I've got a degree and a master's, but I, I, I very much have. A, I've got a very similar opinion in terms of: Do you need a degree to work in IT? The answer is probably not. It doesn't definitely doesn't have to be an essential, an essential requirement on a on many IT job descriptions anyway. No, uh, but it, but it was when when the likes of us were, were, were yeah, starting yeah. out, mm-hmm. um, and you know, I remember twenty years ago when I graduated university, I, I was um, you know pretty much every single even. Yeah starter first line support job uh, do you have an, a degree do you have a degree of honors uh, yeah. it, it was there and you yeah. don't see it so much anymore yeah. no it's definitely 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 um and, and I, I i think that's probably a good thing in truth mm. given mm. like you, you were probably in university roughly the same time i was maybe a little bit after but um i was i was one of the first to pay fees and tuition fees and things and you look at the price of a degree now and you've got it you've actually got it you know the, the actual person going through is going to go well is this going to pay for itself in the long run? And it's a must to do, you know, return yeah. on investment and everything else. Anyway, cool. Cool. Right. Thanks, Ben. That's been fab. Um, I've got one last question just to finish up. We sure. always ask this to everybody. Can you tell us a fun fact about yourself? Oh. That perhaps nobody else knows. Um, all right. So um, I, uh, well, two, well, a couple of fun facts. Uh, one is um, I'm actually quite a, uh, uh, I was quite trained in psychology to quite a high level. Um, which is a bit of a random fact. So I'm not Ooh. just an IT person; I'm a psychologist as well. Um, <laughs> uh, and but um, uh, besides IT, and had I not been IT, uh, I would have probably liked to have been an archaeologist. Uh, oh, so wow. I've got a, a huge passion in in history and um, a great affinity with history and. Uh, and I, uh, you know, I, I think that had a, a not done it that i would have liked to have gone into some kind of geology or archaeologist type role within my life as uh, I've, I've got a great passion around uh, his, history and and kind of fight for, for, probably would have fancied uh, you know get with a shovel digging up <laughs> digging up fields and, <laughs> and dig sites and stuff <laughs> fantastic that's an alternative career mate that's definitely an alternative yeah, yeah, career. Yeah. You, you look a bit of my my my, my, my a bit like my my, my Welsh uh, Griffiths Jones, I think. But um, no, anyway, I didn't say that. Uh, so I've got a question for Geth. So how does it feel being on on the on the psychologist couch uh, then, uh, Geth? Because we haven't had we haven't had somebody who's admitted to that before. No, no, we haven't. It's uh, it, 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 it's been interesting. I would, and I'll be honest. If, if Ben hadn't have said, I wouldn't have known. But uh, um, it's been. <clears throat> Uh, been very interesting. I want to know what words now. All right, guys, thank you very much. Um, you've been listening to the Putting the Human into Technology podcast with our special guest, Ben Morris. Thank you for joining us, Ben. You're welcome. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Ben. That was great. Really enjoyed talking to you. Cheers now. Bye bye. Thank you.